Are you a Dolly user and want to learn how to easily get art style consistency like this? Or maybe get different variants of your character like this? Or maybe just make small adjustments to your character like this. In today's episode, I'm going to show you how to easily do this and more. Another thing I'm going to show you is how to generate multiple images with one single prompt. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. All right, so everything I showed you in the intro was done thanks to Dali's generation ID. And a quick way to kind of look at Gen ID, or think of Gen ID, is a specific ID for an image. And I do believe the main reason Dali and OpenAI does this is because it works better when it has a, a actual picture to reference, right? And the best way and easiest way to do that is to use its Gen ID. So what I usually start off is whenever I start a prompt or a new chat, I always end it with always share the Gen ID for each image. Every image is gonna have its own identification. So here I was trying to create a dragon rhino hybrid. And I was like, hey, look, can I get the Gen ID? But I wanted to understand, hey, look, I know we have Gen ID here. What are some cool things that we can do with it? Uh, and Dali was gladly enough to answer things it could do, generate variations, iterate on the theme, make adjustments, scale and composition, cross-reference, consistency in series, create a story, background changes, mood alteration, and evolution. So now what I wanna do is just kind of showcase a lot of those solutions with different images so you can see the consistency. And we're gonna start off with variation. To the left, I have my first original image, and then I kind of created variations, and those are the two images to my right. In the bit, we are gonna see the prompts that I use, and I'm gonna show you the prompts are super easy. But we can see from the original image, both other images kind of continue to stay with that art style and just make either variants to the color or to maybe the scenic in the background. Again, I've done this with numerous images so we can see the consistency that it's always gonna give me something correct, where again, I'm seeing that same art style on like the feather. The only thing that's changing is maybe the face and some maybe the armor itself. Here's another image completely different from what I was just showing you. And we can see the art style is very same. It's still the lion. Um, this variation, you see the lion looking at a different direction. Here's more of a different close-up shot. Now, the second thing where I think is pretty cool that you can use is it on the theme. So here we can see this is my original image and I tried to create other hybrids. And we can see again, very similar to the art style, all three, you would think they come from the same universe. So this is great at creating kind of universal art. Here, iterate on the theme again, you have that line. Here you have a line, more mixture of like nature. Here you have like a wolf with the nature and the forest, right? So you're, again, you have different images now, but they're all iterating on the theme of the original image. Uh, Here's another perfect example. And now these, again, are very different from my first image, but you would expect them to be from the same universe. Um, now the third thing we have is adjustment. And adjustment is maybe doing a close-up, making some changes. Uh, so in this one, we have more of a changes of a, like a close-up of the picture instead of the dragon's, uh, of the lion's face. Again, we can see the consistency in the art style. And this one, maybe I wanted to add some fireflies so we can see the art of the lion is still very similar. We're just making adjustments to the picture. I think for adjustments, it might be better to use characters. So I also ended up creating a character and here's my original image. My adjustments were pretty much just changing the shirt color of my character. Here I have a green one, here I have a blue. But we can see the straight consistency of the character. Again, we're gonna see some of the prompts in a bit. Um, now change compositions. One thing I did notice though, is after I make the adjustments, um, it also made the, adjust, it made the adjustments to future prompts. So now my original image is a blue shirt figure. So when I changed the composition, I looked for more of a, a full body shot, and that's here right here. Again, we can still see that character character consistency. And now I also ask for a close up shot. Uh, so again, we can change the composition of the image itself. Now another one that I think is pretty interesting is cross reference. So cross reference is if I have image one and image two, I now am able to get the gen ID for both. So I can be like, hey, look, give me a cross reference. And we can see the art style consistency here to some extent 
are better. Um, and now I'm able to kind of put two images together. Now within there, I can make some form of adjustments itself. So I have the gen ID for this image now, and I'm like, hey, can you make this image instead in a snowy background? Another thing you can do is evolution stages. I thought this was pretty interesting, right? Where you can use my gen ID, and my gen ID for this one was this middle image. And I'm like, hey, can you give me a baby variant of this gen ID and also give me an older variant. Now, obviously, now that you have this gen ID, you can create a massive universe with the same art style. These are all dragon slash animal hybrids uh, created. So I do believe gen ID is one of the best ways to kind of be able to create character consistency to some extent, but more importantly, art style consistency to stay within your universe. And before I show you guys the prompts really quickly, if you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. It helps the channel so much. And I'm trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So help me help me as much as possible. I truly, truly appreciate it. All right, so here, let's just take a closer look at some prompts so now we can understand what we're looking at, right? We saw the examples, now let's see how we do it. So I asked, can you draw a cartoon animated Hispanic man in his 30s with glasses, brown eyes, black wavy hair, slightly round head, and a beard and a red solid shirt. So here we can see the best way is to always be as descriptive as you can. And I got two images. Now it's like, hey look, can you give me the gen ID for image two? And it did. Now I was like, can we adjust that ID to have a green shirt? So now I'm straight referencing that original image and it gives me this prompt. It gives me this response. Now it's like, hey, can we adjust the image to have a blue shirt instead? So now we're able to kind of get that adjustments of that image very, very quickly. Now, if we want a full body shot, can we get a full body shot? We've referenced that image right off the bat. Now I ask for a close up shot of the image. Again, it's very easily prompt. So these are the great ways to get kind of the changes in variance and to also get the change in composition. Now, if you want to make art style very similar, I said, hey, look, can you make our park scene using the art style theme from our original image? So we can see it created more of an animated cartoonish way. Now I asked, can I get the gen ID for the theme park? And it did give me that new gen ID. So now to be able to put those images together, can you make a cross reference of ID number one and ID number two, and I'm able to get these new images. I wanted another example. I just asked, can you give me another example of the cross reference? And again, it pulled up both image IDs and make a new cross reference. So now I have actually a new ID. So this is the first image. And I said, can you make the first image in the winter with snow? And then it gave me this example. Now, if I want to get a different variant, I'm using the first image ID, which is this one for this image. And I ask, can you generate variations of that gen ID, maybe change colors? So obviously you can include the colors yourself or like me, sometimes I let Dali imagine and it gave me this variant. Then I asked for another variation and it gave me this one instead. Then I asked, can you make the adjustment of this image by making the eyes close? And we can see it really did follow the prompt as I requested. Now, in Another pretty cool thing here is you're actually able to create more than one image with one single prompt, especially for the variants. I think this is pretty interesting. It's probably my favorite thing to do. So here I got the gen ID for image number two, and we're just going to call it this right here. So I wanted to get multiple images at the same time. And I asked, can you follow the theme from this image and make a squirrel dragon, then a dog dragon, then a hamster dragon, then a rat dragon, then a deer dragon, then a moose dragon, and then a hyena dragon. So this is asking for, I believe, six to seven images. And normally this would take me six to seven requests. But Dali actually takes them and creates them one by one. So we, here we can see the squirrel and the dragon. Here we can see, what is that supposed to be? A dog and a dragon, then a hamster and a dragon. Um, I forget what this one's supposed to be. Here's the deer and the dragon. Here's the moose and the dragon. And here's the hyena and the dragon. So so I hope you guys enjoyed this quick image. I, if you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. It definitely helps out this channel as I'm trying to grow. So I definitely, definitely appreciate the help.